Charles. You have fallen into my trap, and now you are forever lost to the VCR podcast. And now, here are your masters. Views the shawls. Damn it! She's in another castle, isn't she? Jin and Chris. All the Nintendogs are on fire. CS Radical. I was promised cat boys. Now, let the show begin. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the VCR Podcast, Episode 70. Not nearly as exciting as Episode 69, uh, mind you, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best. But I am and that's it for two. tonight, everyone. Good night. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. So this is Adam, a.k.a. ACS Radical here. Jin and Chris, Views with Shaw, he's here with us. Oh, my God, I almost butchered that name horribly. Uh, yeah, it is another podcast on the day of podcasts that exist with podcasts, and there's a podcast, and we might have a podcast where we talk about podcast-related things on the podcast. <gasps> but in other words... Thank you so much. Let's start the podcast. Yeah, that would be a great idea. Thank you so much for joining us. To anybody who joins us here on Twitch at CS Radical, obviously the VOD is also on YouTube as well. So if you guys are there, like and subscribe. If you're on Twitch, follow. Whereas we get down the path of affiliation here on this channel, we're about halfway there, I think, follower wise. So we're getting, we're making progress finally. But whoa, we're halfway there. And the DMCA's are flowing in. So as I fade out our intro music ever so gingerly with this really, really great system that I have, which is me on the mouse slowly turning the dial towards the left. Because <laughs> there's no proper dial to twist and turn. Uh, so what technician. you're saying is the dial is on your left. All right, so I'm going to start then because I'm not giving you the option to screw this up right at the very beginning. So yeah, let Fair me enough. start with the highlight of the f- fucking week. And I'd love to say that it would be 20 plus hours of Outriders, except the servers decided to be like, nah, you're getting 10. So Outriders has still been a very fun experience. Do not get me wrong. But I tried to stream Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I'm pretty sure that when I could have gotten, I don't know, let's say about roughly 16 to 18 hours, it was probably more like... 10 and up and like four hours of void bastards because i was just waiting for the servers to go back on there were a lot of server issues in the first few days and that's not surprising it's not surprising at all yeah. because that's what online games are but it still sucks because you really want to play the game <laughs> and you also have to watch like every person online bitch and moan every time like oh my god why does this game can't get their server straight i'm like because every fucking online game can't get their server straight i'm not saying it's it's okay that that happens but I think we should be used to it by now. Because, like, do we have we forgotten that Diablo 3 was a thing, or Destiny was a thing, or GTA Online was a thing, or The Division was a thing? I can go on for a while, but you get the point. But apart from the server outages, game is still pretty fun, just like the demo was. I mean, now that I'm much further in, I'm starting to get a bit more of a sense of things. Now with things like modding, your, modding guns and stuff, I gotta tell you, the mod system in this game is a godsend to what Destiny used to be. So just to summarize it, if you wanted a really good piece of armor with a specific two perks and maybe stats on it, you had to keep playing the same missions over and over again and hope that when you randomly got one of that version of the armor dropped, it was the right roll that you wanted. Whereas in Outriders, here's what you do. If you want your best rated armor in the game to have the mods you like, take the old armor with the mod you like, dismantle it. You keep the mod forever, and you just go to the mod guy, and he puts it on your armor for a very low cost. So you can keep using your setup without having to wait over and over again for the upgraded version of that piece. It is so amazing to be able to customize your character the way that you want it, from the very beginning that you can and keep it all the way through if you actually want. If you just want to play with a certain build the entire game, you can do that. Instead of sometimes the game forcing you to use specific armors or weapons because they're the higher level. That was the one thing about Destiny that I was a little not too happy about. Like there would be armor pieces or weapons that I fucking loved using and then they were obsolete because you just wouldn't level them up enough. So to have the opportunity to do it here is like... That's going to make this game in the long run actually work well for people coming in because they're going to feel like they can actually like accomplish what they want to now, which is beautiful. Hmm. 
No, it, this actually looks like it's going to be a lot. It looks like it could be a lot of fun. It's something I think we could actually play together. I was actually and... going to say this too. I think that this game actually works with a very slow management because the story and the difficulty is a big highlight of it. Now, granted, I haven't gotten to the end game yet, so I don't know what the purpose is of getting to the end and what that means for, you know, if, if the better parts of the game are there. But like, this is it, definitely a game so, that like we sorry, could pop sorry, on. Dr. Strange. I'm just, I'm, oh, whatever. Thank you for interrupting me with a completely dumb fucking reference. Um, yeah, no, this is a game that like, I could literally create a character and that's the character I play with you guys. And I could still happily have other characters on the side because I think you can do like, I think it's six or eight max. So, oh, nice. and there's only four classes right now. So you could technically have two characters of each class if you really wanted to. And it, it works out nicely. And again, more of the game is, is, is actually the difficulty that keeps it fresh. Because the way that the difficulty works in Outriders, I don't know how well I explained it when I was talking about the demo. So there are what they call world tiers. You start at one when you start the game and you can go as high as 15. So the way that it works is that every time you get up a world tier and it's just done naturally by you playing that the highest tier available. You can't, you can't play up to world tier seven and then decide that's too hard and go to five and still rank up your tiers. You have to play seven to rank up the tier. So at from one till three, you're getting lower levels. Three is the point where every enemy is literally leveled the exact as you. Every level from three onward, they add one level to the enemies you face. So for example, my tier that I'm stuck on is seven, which means they're four levels higher than me every time I walk into a battle. And they rinse your ass. <laughs> but uh, so with this game, like, is the ammo fair? Like, Oh, the ammo is never ammo? the problem. Actually, in boss areas, there is a ammo refill box usually somewhere on the map. So if you even run out, you'll be fine. Okay, that's okay. pretty cool. So they do everything they can to make it that if you die, it's going to be because you're either overwhelmed or you made a bad choice. It's not going to be because you don't have ammo. I mean, you could run out of ammo, but again, by the time that you've done enough running around on that portion of the map, you probably should know where the box is. And I'm only talking boss battles. In random areas where there's like small amounts of enemies, you shouldn't be running out of ammo because most of them drop ammo, so you'll be able to continuously replenish. So... Most of what the game does is actually pretty fair. And the world tiers are great too because you don't have to play on the highest tier to get the best... Well, I mean, you could play it to have a better chance of getting the best loot, but you don't have to. It's the odds that get a little bit higher. Like, I think I think the tier that I'm stuck on, it's enemies are up four levels higher, and I think it's that the, the legendary rate is at 285% to extent of like what it would be lower in other tiers. But you can still have a decent shot of getting stuff by playing on a tier that's right about the level that you can handle. And it's interesting too because so far there are two types of enemies that I've encountered. There's either the humans or there are monsters. And the monsters I can tend to handle at better levels, but the humans are really hard in, in World Tier 7 because they are super aggressive. And especially if you get to the character that has like superpowers like you do, it's really hard. Because he will and just all, charge you and just throw everything at you. And it is difficult. In all fairness, humans are terrible. Well, yeah, it makes we sense. Are. We are. But yeah, like I've enjoyed, and I've got one ability left to go, but the, the um, what is the class now? It's, oh, it's Trickster. I keep wanting to say Stalker. I'm like, that is not the class at all. The Trickster class is super, super fun. It's great for rushing. It's great for just going around shotgunning people on the map and getting around and just like, being an overall jackass, I can't wait to finish that character and try other classes in full again. But like every class has their own perks, depending on what you're doing. Some classes seem to be better as a solo. I think I mentioned that when we were talking about the demo, some are better when you have people to, to support, but either way, like the time that I spent with it, I've been mad at certain times. Cause I think like the overwhelming, cause again, I'm playing on higher tiers. So sometimes it's just because I'm playing it over my level that I can handle. Sometimes I do think the spawning is a little bit strange because in most games that are like this, a spawn is either like, I don't know, like there's this black abyss of a room that you can't go into for an invisible wall, but that's where the enemies come out of. Or it's like if it's monsters, they come from like a certain set area up on the cliffs or they come out of the ground. In this case, guys just seem to appear sometimes. And sometimes to the point that like, I'll look ahead of me, see seven dots on the map and be like, okay, I know that's how much I have left. And then I'll walk a little bit further in and suddenly there are 13 dots. And I'm like, that was not there beforehand. So 
I think the information is a little bit weird on it. Hmm. But for the most, like, there was one mission on my last stream where I was rage, raging, like, fucking mad. Oh, man, was I mad. Because <laughs> it was a really long mission, too. And it was almost like a D-Day, like, Beaches of Normandy, No Man's Land kind of thing. And there are guys on the higher ground. There's a sniper. There are guys shooting missiles at you. It's really hard solo. It helps when you have more guys to kind of like take distractions away. But when it's just you and the AI is really good aim too. It's like GTA Online good good aim. It's um, sometimes enemy really AI hard. or ally AI. Oh, well, ally AI was almost unexistent. It just it, most most of the time there's no ally A's to begin with. It's you usually just you. I think in that specific mission you get allies, but the point is, is they die quickly. You're the only one that can handle it because you're, you know, you're not, you're, in a, you're technically an immortal, whereas everybody else is still a, a meaty flesh bag, so they're they're gonna die to bullets pretty quick. But um, yeah, some parts can get really frustrating, but for the most part, I've enjoyed my time, and it and it's definitely got a pretty good foundation. It's just a shame that there are a few nitpicks that I constantly have, like the difficulty sometimes, and the covering is pretty ass, like. You could play Gears of War on the Xbox 360 and probably think there is a better cover system. And that's kind of uncalled for. That's pretty bad. But for the most part, you just get around it by just rushing a lot. So sometimes covering isn't always what you do. Sometimes you just cover just to reload for a second and then you go back out and run. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, reminds me of the system of um, left for, uh, no, killing floor. Like covering doesn't really. Well, help there isn't you really a much. cover system in killing floor either. Yeah, it's just you. You, you just run. <laughs> <laughs> you just run. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like you're saying, like covering in this game. Running doesn't always running. work in this game, though, either, because again, their aim is really good. They have weapons, unlike the zombies who are just trying to claw your face off. True. So it's a little bit harder. Not to mention, if you do run into a captain, which is the super powered guys, <laughs> they can do things like freeze you. Or just other really annoying shit that's just like, yeah, this is kind of going to be hard. There are some points where I'd like face a captain and I'd be tracing myself all the way down the map, just trying to get away for a moment to heal. And I'd be in like a whole separate battle area than when I, where I started <laughs> because I've backtracked so far to try to get some health back. And, and that's probably my last issue. Health regenerates, but not enough. It regenerates about 30% of your health or so. And uh, that's a uh, struggle when they can kill you really quick. And for some reason, your shields don't seem to regenerate, which is kind of frustrating. It's like so, Fortnite. So as soon as you lose, lose your shield and your health is going down, you, unless like there's enemies that you can still pick up health packs on, because more often than not, like most of your powers are geared that you'll gain health back as you kill. But if it's just you and the boss and you don't have any armor left and your health is depleting, you're only going to get as much as 33% of your ar or health for the rest of that battle, and you better make do on it. So it can be a little frustrating in that thing. So there's a lot of issues that I still take with it, but it's still better than Avengers, so I guess that's a major plus in its favor. And you haven't even played Avengers yet. Oh, I played it once you for the demo, the demo. Oh, and, that's, and that's all I needed. And that's all yeah. I needed. So unless, uh, Sony, if you put that on for free on PlayStation Plus, I have no in indication of needing to do that. So, uh, Outriders, so. you can take my time for the next little while. At least until May 12th, I think, when Le when Mass Effect Legendary Edition's out, and then we'll talk. Um, or when yeah. they release a proper version of Cyberpunk. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that, that's probably the end of this year, if anything. Yeah, if that's this year at all. Like the the upgrade, I don't think is slated until they're done most of their patching. So they've been they've said pretty much second half of next year or not next year, uh, this year. This so year. I'm assuming it's probably going to be the end of the year, if if not later. So it'll be in time for Madden 2022. I mean, yeah, Chris can go that's play that while September. I play Cyberpunk. <laughs> um, they'll both be glitchy. <laughs> uh, it's Adam. I have a quick question. So. If I were to start a new game in this and I was level one and you're like level, I don't know, say it was 20. Um, how does it work with the scaling? Do you know? That is a good like question, you... actually. Because I'm not going to lie. This was downloading today on my Xbox Outriders. Yeah, because it's on so, Game Pass, right? Yeah, and it's um, uh, cross play. I checked. So whether you have the console version or whatever, I know there was some issue between PC and console for crossplay, so that's why I decided to put it on the actual Xbox instead of on the PC for uh, Game Pass. But yeah, like I, I definitely am gonna be playing this 
starting soon. Like, I mean, I can probably do, I'll probably do single player just to, not single player, but I'll just like run solo for a bit so I can get used to it. And then uh, I may hop into some of your streams or when you're playing. So this is what I'm, I'm seeing this, and this is straight from People Can Fly, and this is before the game came out. So this is what they're saying. After the prologue, there is no restriction on playing with friends, regardless on level and world tier difference. Matchmaker is built to match players with relatively similar power, but with join function, there is no limit other than technical ones. The world state is based on host. This includes world tiers and final enemy levels. Uh, when you play on lower tier, your gear remains legal. It's the highest unlock gear level. What counts? Okay. okay. So it seems like it, it'll it'll still scale at least to some extent. That I wouldn't be like God if I played in your game. Yeah, if you hosted, it sounds like I would more be just reaping all the benefits of probably extra. Yeah. XP or whatever I it is you get. When Adam would host. probably be um, doing a lot of the grunt work and oh, yeah, able just be to actually hiding. assist. <laughs> I would hit a guy with one bullet and then let I'd be him, like, Chris, you get the sniper rifle and you just pick off all the assholes that I can't shoot right now. <laughs> that's that's what I'm looking at it as. Damn, I'd be into that. Is this um FTP right now or no? No, no, no. This is well, if you play on game it, like it's free on Game Pass technically, if if you want to call it free, but it's on yeah. Game Pass for only yeah. console, which is a shame because it'd be nice to have it on PC as well. But no, otherwise it's it's a full price game. Oh yeah, no, that's why I was getting on the Xbox too, because it wasn't available on the PC X uh Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a like, I'm going to try it out on Game Pass because this is one of those games that we may play for a long time. And I have a feeling with it being on Game Pass, no, no games except for first party are there forever. So even though I might be able to play it on there for a year, the um, way I see it is I can. It's, I, it's I don't know definitely a game that you could come back to and just be like, well, hey, this is yeah. our character. We're slowly going through the story on this thing. And especially if we ever got to the end. Because there will be, by the time that we get to the end, based on how often we play together, like there will be a lot of more content by then too, so. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, this is one of those ones where I'll play it on Game Pass, but I could see myself picking it up, either buying it on on Xbox when it's leaving Game Pass, because I have already my characters there and want to keep them, or switching over to the PC version and then... Uh, yeah, I mean, just starting again with a new character, but still going or whatever. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I imagine you can't keep your prop. Well, if you got it on, um, no, me. Yeah, that's that's hard to say. I don't know how that would go. Yeah, I think it's something that they're gonna have more information on later. I mean, there's probably an, already an answer to it. I just haven't thought about it because yeah, I don't exactly. have to think about it. I'm playing it on PlayStation, so. Yeah, hundred percent. Or I'll pick it up there. Who knows? I could. Yeah. Yeah, you never know if a, if a sale comes across or anything like that, right? So. Yeah, because who knows? After a year, if we're still playing and it's like fucking twenty bucks on PlayStation. It I'll would be nice to know though if you could keep your progress somehow, but I doubt that cross saving would be a thing for platform. But. It doesn't have cross pro progression right now, but they said they're going to look into it in the future or something. Because right now they want to make sure the cross play. And the game itself runs well or, yeah. or something. So, and I mean, that's fine. Like most people are not going to be suddenly switching consoles in the first month of this game. 100%. 100%. Unless, unless you're still waiting for an Xbox Series X or a PS5 and you get lucky in the, uh, I want to, I want to say the, uh, the raffle. Cause that's pretty much what it ends up being when you go, when you log into a, uh, an Amazon thing or uh, a lobby when you're at EB games yeah. or wherever you, you get, you try to buy your, your consoles from, but. 100%. But no, otherwise like. For like for about eighty percent of the game so far, I'm really loving it, and I'm pretty happy that I made the choice to stream at day one. There are just a few things, and I'm like, uh, man, if they just fix these couple of things, like that'd be really cool. How much is it on Steam, Adam? Oh, it's full price. Like we're talking eighty bucks. Eighty bucks. Oh, okay, okay. So, all right. Once it's on sale, I'll definitely buy it because I think this is definitely something we can all play together. Oh, this is one hundred percent. a pretty good game to play. I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty surprised how much I've loved this game considering that this looked like it was going to be just another flop like every games as a service game has been recently. Hmm. But no, it's Yeah, I it's, definitely can't wait to hear this. It's been pretty nice, so I'm not going to I'm not going to complain at all here. Sweet. No, no, that actually looks like it's going to be something that's going to be a lot of fun and um really just it's a good time. Yeah, 100%. Uh, then let's go on to, okay, I've avoided you once. So Vish, what did you do? What's your highlight? So, yeah. Um, again, this week I haven't done much gaming. I've been, uh, playing a little bit of Fall Guys on my own just cause I'm trying to 
not humiliate myself when I play with you guys. So I've been able to get past the first round on multiple times. And I mean, that happened several times today as well before the podcast. Yeah, you've improved a lot. <laughs> and by a lot, we mean, we mean you actually pass once in a while. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately, my highlight of the week is what Adam referred to as fun garbage. I watch Godzilla versus Kong. Ah. Uh, oh. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 exactly what you're expecting it to be. It don't care about the story, don't care about the characters, don't care about literally any substance in this. It was just fun nonsense. You saw Godzilla and Kong fight each other. And you saw King Kong v. Thor for a little while. Chris understands what I mean. I mean, I to be it. fair, do you watch any of these movies and expect, like, high quality? I mean, come on. I don't think people went into Alien vs. Predator being like, man, this is going to be Oscar shit right here. I mean, I expected a l- little more story with it. Or, sorry, slightly... I had there it was slightly sto- higher. There was actually as the a story indiv- to it. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a story. Yeah. I mean, there's always as a story to it. It doesn't mean it's a good people. story. <laughs> It was just more of like, yeah. uh, this is, it, it's exactly what you think. It's Godzilla versus Kong. And there was actually three rounds of battles between them. Yeah. And it, it was just like, it, 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 it's, it, it was just fun garbage. It wasn't like, do, do not take it seriously. Do not expect any awards to come out of it. it <laughs> I, th- I, just... think, I think 99.9% of viewers that watched that movie went, Got it. <laughs> I mean, it's possible it could win for something like sound editing or one of those. No. It, it, if it gets nominated, that's as close as it's ever going to get. Yeah. It's like every sound time you look editing. at the Oscars and you see a Marvel movie and you're like, well, let me guess. It's probably for CG. And it's like, yep, there it is. Costumes. Well, that was the thing. It's like when Black Panther got nominated for be- for Best Picture. Don't get me wrong. I loved Black Panther. But it's like, why was it... Um, Winter Soldier, why wasn't Infinity Wars nominated? Like, those were better I was going to say, yeah, there were better movies the same year, weren't there? Yeah. Infinity Wars came out the same year that uh, Black Panther did. And did I'm it just actually like, come out the same? Wow. It did. 2018. So let's see. MCU in 2018. Yeah. Oh, God. Google is not happy. Because with it was Captain doing. Marvel that came out the same year as Endgame. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, again, yeah, it was, in, it was big... Avengers and Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I think, actually, I like both those movies better than Black Panther, to be honest. I think between, between all the movies in that, in that yeah, year, I think, tell, actually, yeah. Black Panther is, is the those weakest one. Those are all one. really good ones. They're, it's yeah, not to say all... Black Panther's a bad movie, but I'm saying between the three of them, I probably liked it the, the least. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, I loved Black Panther, but and Infinity Wars is one of my favorite movies of all time. Because, literally, with Infinity Wars... You couldn't talk about it after it was done because something happened every five minutes, literally. Like, guys, it's a it's a three year old movie at this point. Loki dies in the first five minutes. Like, it's okay. He's back huh? now. It's fine. Yeah. He's got he's got How a TV you... series. It's cool. Which yeah, I, I know. Just I can't fine. wait for that too. That looks like so much fun. Him that and, looks like him, fun, and yeah. him and Owen Wilson seems like a match made in heaven, doesn't it? So Adam is going to now sign up for Disney Plus. <laughs> no, I'm just no, I'm 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 totally going to find alternate routes to watch it. So watch okay. WandaVision and uh, oh actually, oh, I, oh I have I have plans to finally get around to WandaVision. I'm still trying to find time to. This is the problem with being a streamer now. Time is even less than I used to have. I uh, did just. Like I'm telling you, like one division was just like it starts off very slowly, but all of a sudden it's like, oh shit, what the fuck's going on? I watched Man in the High Castle. Believe me, I'm used to a to a show starting slow and then getting amazing. So, and then uh, yeah, yeah, I would say Man in the High Castle is even more so. And than... also like with um with Falcon and Winter Soldier, like this last week that um, Chris can can attest to that. This last week's episode was insane. Like it was pretty it, good. It was just I was just like, oh shit, Bucky's back. And, and I mean, like I've got a, I've got already starting a list of like things that I'm gonna have to start watching sooner than later. WandaVision and Expanse season five are both things that I'm like I I really can't believe I haven't started either of these still. Because Expanse so, is done. You were originally waiting for that, and it's yeah. done now. Yeah. No. It's um. So it's like 
with Falcon and Winter Soldier. Like I said, it, I, I was expecting it just like some awesome action espionage show, but it turning it's turning out to be a lot more than that. Like slightly spoiler alert. Slightly. No, I don't want. I don't even want slight spoiler alert. I don't want that. I don't want to take that yeah. chance. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't do it. For my own him. personal safety. Uh, moving back to Godzilla vs. <laughs> Kong, just to, just for a brief thing, if you were to give it your own personal star rating, what would you give it? I'm not talking... With, it, I don't care if you think it's like... If it's actually a 2 out of 5 movie. I want what you actually think it is. Like, in your mind, how I, much... I would say it's a 7 out of 10, because with 7 out of... You immediately bypass the star it, rating. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's just a fucking... It's just fun. It's just, you watch it, you enjoy it, you got exactly what the title told you it was going to be. It's, it's it like just, when you go to McDonald's and get, and get just like a gross like ass quarter pounder and fries. You're like, look, I know that this is trash, but I love my trash. So, Yeah, I was exactly. going to say something along those lines. I was going to use like chocolate cake as a reference. Like, you know it's Oh no, you can get you, some bougie ass like chocolate anyway. cake. Oh, oh yeah, dude, dude, this dude, is, dude, yeah, no, no, like, no, 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 uh, no. Okay, like, this is so this is this is going to slowly turn into the dessert porn co- podcast if we if we're not yeah. careful here. Uh, uh, I'm into trust it. me, I'm I'm I like. There's this one dessert place that I go to in Oakville pretty frequently. Uh, it's called the Sweetest Thing, and they have arguably the best chocolate mousse cake I've ever had in my life. Oh. Oh, I love it. Chocolate. It is legitimately fucking orgasmic. Uh, for the record, they're not sponsored by us. I'm just saying. That I mean, look, chocolate- we everybody knows that this podcast is sponsored by EA Sports and Madden. Like that's that's literally exactly. the most obvious thing here. So especially because they finally got to us so much that Chris had to play the game for a week. So <laughs> we talked about it so much that I inspired myself to still hate it. <laughs> No, like it's oh, Godzilla is a Kong. It just it's fun garbage. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, it, it it it's it's not what we were expecting. We uh, I was doing some basic action show. It is so much more than that. And also the latest episode of Invincible, it it it's a really good show. It it, it this week was pro- arguably the best episode so far. And I think it's just shit's going to get even more and more. And like I said, as long as it doesn't turn into a stalemate like The Walking Dead turned into, I'm good. Even if it's a just a one season miniseries, I'm good. Because... Sometimes that's the best situation, too, because you get your fix in and then you don't have a chance to see it start to falter. Yeah, because yeah. that's um, essentially uh, with WandaVision, it's considered a miniseries. Well, I mean, because I think gonna... all of these are technically going to be miniseries because I don't think they've said anything about any of these uh, series continuing unless, like... I think well, WandaVision uh, might be getting Anthony a second. Anthony Mackie, he said that uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier is one season. Yeah, just one If off. they were going to have a season two, it's going to be renamed. So that's what... It'll be two different through. characters or something, I bet. That's why. They'll yeah. pair two other people up. So Falcon, the Winter Soldier, and uh, Shuri... I'm, I that was literally a random name. That's I mean, no spoiler or anything. I mean, like it, it's it's still the kind of thing that we always want to go back to as well with Black Panther, where we're like, man, like what, they, they're still going to go forward with Black Panther too. So it makes you wonder. It's like, okay, are they just going to pass it on to a new actor, or are they going to give it to a, a character that's already been established? So, like, unfortunately, with the whole situation that happened with Lashita Wright. Yeah, that's the problem too. The but, person that we thought the, was the best the option. Is, though, it's the best option. It's the best circumstance for a bad situation because i i will say this having a colored female as a lead marvel character is going to be golden to honor the legacy like and honestly there is i can't think of a better way to do it regardless of what her personal life is because trust me like for for someone who has had their personal life invaded by their workplace, it fucking sucks. And if you, like, whatever she believes in, keep that out of the portrayal of the character. Well, the problem is, is, as a public figure, we've kind of, this this is the problem with social media in general. We've made it so that your entire thought processing is now available for everybody to see. So it's so hard to hide because eventually you slip. Yeah. And then do you hold people accountable? Because like Gina 
what the heck's that Carano? lady's name? Carano. Yeah, yeah. And like she put out her personal thoughts on stuff. And it was enough. We were like, get her off Star Wars. Like, because I mean, I don't want to go too deep into the conversation, but really just the question just becomes like, where, what's the line that we have to hold them permanently 100%. accountable? And then what's the point where it's like, all right, you fucked up, wallow in it for a little while, and then maybe we'll give you a chance to come back. Because it, it's different from person to person. I think that some people have a really hard time yeah. giving people the I chance to have a redemption tour. With, uh, let, let me let me yeah. finish first. I'm sorry. Uh, I find that people generally have trouble with the redemption angle. I think people think like you can never redeem yourself, which I'm like, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Like we're not yeah. talking about serial killers. We're not talking about rapists in, in most cases. <laughs> and uh, child molester, there's absolutely no redemption for that. Yeah, there are certain things, but like off comments, like it's the same thing too. Like I've seen people like say some pretty horrendous shit seven years ago and then be in support of thing good things now. So it's like at some point, like you got to give people room to change. And it's one thing too if they say it yesterday. It's another thing when they say it almost a decade ago. So I think there's there's those lines too. So not yeah. every situation is going to be the same. The problem is is because we're in a media social media world where everybody takes everything so seriously. The second it gets dropped on their on their doorstep, it's it's hard. It's hard to really divvy between the, I guess not the two, but the millions of these cases because everybody treats it's, it the um, same no matter what the circumstances may be. So um. I will. I I don't know. Like that's the thing. It's like, like I don't. With, I don't want to dive into any more specifics. I just kind of yeah. wanted to say, like specifically, just in general, it's like, man, like people need to kind of be careful on on setting a standard because uh, if if it's bad every time somebody does it, that means the people that are actually doing really good things are also going to get the same treatment too. So yeah, that's that's and kind of the double edged sword you you run with. That's that's the problem. It's like I think honestly, Shuri taking over the mantle of Black Panther is the best option. And I think around. it can still work. It's just there's going to be a bit of a sore spot for a little while. But I think that will fade away in time anyway. Yeah, but it's like, it also could be like a situation with Gal Gadot. Like I know a lot of people who were pissed off. It's like, oh, Wonder Woman is a supermodel. Wonder Woman is a supermodel. And we're but like, yeah, like, she's an Amazonas. There's, it's almost impossible for her to not look good. <laughs> But it's like okay. Here's the thing: the way Wonder. Oh, Woman you mean like an act? Now, the, like the choice for the actor in general was a supermodel. Sorry. No, no. But I mean, like people were saying, oh, Wonder Woman's not thin and and skinny and all that. It's like if they look at Wonder Woman now, the portrayal of Wonder Woman now, the way her fighting movements are, the way her reflexes, the way she moves. I'm sorry, you have to be pretty lean to do all those moves. Well, not to mention too, pretty- like they're thinking like, oh, she's so thin, like like she's the like the running joke. What was that one supermodel on that like Family Guy made fun of that she was as thin as a sheet of paper? Kate Moss. Thank you. Was it Kate Moss? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it's like they're thinking that like Gal Gadot went into Wonder Woman being a fucking stick, you know? Oh, she worked out for off. that role. Like, it's and all she muscle. She actually she trains had. quite aggressively. Yeah, it's yeah. all muscle. She's just like one muscle. She's just she's just it's like a pit bull's leg girl, and she's Stretched really out. tall. She's five nine and a half. She's taller than me. But yeah, a little bit. We we went so far off the topic now that I think the train is now under like like yeah. it's it's underwater. <laughs> it's it's joining so, the Titanic right now. But yeah, it seems like uh, Kong versus Godzilla was a was a pretty fun <laughs> movie. Yeah, yeah especially it's, when honestly, they fought just, Wonder Woman. Just, I think just is what fun. happened. <laughs> don't 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 raise a level don't have a high level for it it's just fun to watch and i'm just honestly, gonna say it if you go into godzilla versus kong with high expectations you're not you're not a very you haven't watched movies very often have you <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not gonna say you know like, directed by kenneth Branagh I, or something I think, you know what i mean I think <laughs> this is a movie we would have watched in theaters and I probably one- wouldn't have, but I know that you guys would have, and then I just would have met, met you guys yeah. at the bar afterwards and heard stories about it. Yeah, we just were like, you know what? It wasn't great, but it was just fun as shit to watch. And you know, it, it actually would have succeeded in theaters because... Oh, yeah, 100% it would have. Because if you hear it's like Kong versus Godzilla, it's like, you know what? This that is a like- box office <laughs> film. Like, let's be honest. Exactly. That's, that's a movie that makes people go, I know this is going to be shit, but I'm going to watch it anyway. <laughs> It's just gonna be fun, and yeah, it was fun. It, it wasn't it, bad. Honestly, like it wasn't a bad like, movie. It's just it wasn't. Don't. But if it, it was serious. bad, you wouldn't have been surprised. <laughs> no, 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 we would have been like, "Oh, that was terrible," but it was fun. Terrible. 
<laughs> it, it's not it's like, like look for all we know we'll, we'll get to go watch suicide squad in a few more months and we'll be like this could be really bad but it might be kind of fun bad anyway no so. i think that's gonna be a great fucking movie. i still think there's a chance for it to well, be bad your because expectations it's like here like it's dc movies here. vish i'm keeping the expectations low just for my own safety I don't know, man. This the Snyder Justice I'm just, League I'm is just saying, incredible. if it ends up being bad and you get disappointed, I'm going to be the first one on the show being like, I told you to keep them low. <sighs> it's okay. I have a bar right here to keep me from listening to. Oh no, that bar will say. keep you still low. Don't, 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 don't kid yourself. <laughs> it's uh no, it's honestly uh Kong versus Godzilla. I think it just. It, it's just a good time. Like it's just sometimes it's the whole situation. It's like. Critics are bitches. They Shocking. Don't... Sorry. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> oh, sorry. Critics Allergy. Too many sneeze takes on this podcast. That's the quota for the day. Allergies, Allergy. not Corona. No, it's it just critics are bitches. It's the fact is like some people cannot enjoy themselves. They're just going to bitch and moan and just not enjoy themselves. Like lighten the fuck up. Just enjoy yourselves man like lighten up we're in a shitty time of humanity right now last thing i'm gonna say before i get i finally get chris on here for his highlight okay. i because i was looking for movies to start putting on my list because i want to start into the habit of watching stuff again so i i looked okay metacritic let me just see like roughly like what are the the top rated movies for a little bit they're all fucking either documentaries or like clearly like oscar bait i'm like this is why i don't like critics in film in the film industry because there's no way of knowing what's a fun movie versus what's an art movie because the critic ratings are always going to be geared to the art stuff and i'm not saying that's a bad thing if that's what it it has to be that's what it has to be but then i can't do the like i can't look at like what are the worst movies and gauge that because that still could be bad movies so like what do i do do i look at what all the 50s and 60s on metacritic are is that my gauge like i don't know it's hard to figure that out if you if you go to the game section on metacritic you know what the best games are but if you go to the best movies they may not necessarily be anything close to the kind of movies you watch because 90 percent of them are movies you've never heard of this is a situation this is the problem i have with award shows now um it's like you said, they're very artsy, arrogant people. Well, here's the thing too. Award shows don't are arbitrary and should never matter to the casual public anyway. No, they shouldn't. Even because... the game awards, I think people need to stop fucking thinking that the game awards mean anything either. Like it's just a fun night yeah, to just see it's shit. It's a fun night. Like but everybody's the, um, like, oh my god, this award, how could they give this award to this game? It's like, guys, I'll, I'll the game say, the game I, isn't I, gonna I sell. Admit... Like your your enjoyment of the game doesn't change. Same with your enjoyment of a movie if it never gets nominated for an Oscar, you know? I will admit, of the past, I'll say two years, the movies that have been nominated for Best Picture, they actually weren't painful to watch. They were actually yeah, like Parasite is fantastic. And 1917, 19, was it 1917, I believe? Oh, you mean nominations, not just Best Picture winners. Yeah, 1917 was, I honestly, fantastic. I, I saw it and I'm like, Oh my god, this was actually fucking fantastic. Like the way they yeah. did that movie, it was so well done that I like Parasite it was between Parasite and that. And and personally to in my opinion, I thought 1917 was the better film just the way it was done. Sure. But in the end, it's really nice to piss off all the uh, all the races out there by having a foreign film end up winning. That was amazing. Oh no, no. I don't get me wrong. Oh, I, it was so I, worth I it. I don't even care if it was the best movie or not. It was so worth it to watch so but many I people also, reading one thing, on the internet one for like thing weeks. I will say, and on a personal level, with 1917, it was the first time it ever acknowledged Indian people in the British Army. The way that they had the... Uh, because a lot of times in a lot of World War I and World War II films, they omit the Indians that were in the British Army. They are like, oh, we, whatever. We don't, we don't, we're not, they weren't there. They were there. And there was a lot of, the, of us there. Yeah, for sure. So in 1917, they actually showed that. And even actually, uh, I was watching Wonder Woman the other day. Okay, can we, can they, we get like, can, can we try to stop with a tangent? We've gone like 20 minutes on this. I get that. We should get probably that. get back to Chris at some point. I know. I get it. But I'm saying, in, even in Wonder Woman, they showed that. But Chris, what have you been up to? 
There's the second. I'm going to fucking boot your ass for doing that shit to me. I hate that. Chris is just laughing because uh, he, he knows I'm just sitting here like wallowing in my own misery right now. And he <laughs> left, and he fucking left too. What a fucking <laughs> asshole. But he's our asshole. Uh, God damn. Oh, there, there, there was the, uh, the I touched my microphone I touched sound. My mic. I touched my mic. I have no idea. It's like it's nuclear. I have no idea what the fuck it is. Anyways, to get back it's, on it's to get back on somewhat of a professional tangent here, oh, so what is your highlight for the week? Thankfully, it's probably so, not Madden, I imagine. So, I played... No. I it's did finish totally Madden. Madden. I, I, as a small aside, I did go back to Madden because I hadn't finished the career mode. Oh, yeah. I did is Tommy still alive? Or does he have no so, hat? Once you get into the NFL, you get one text from Tommy in the seventh season, and you get to choose how you respond, and it's meaningless because they're both the same answer worded differently. It's, it's, like, it's, it's almost like they put no effort into the story mode because they know no one cares anymore holy because fuck. all they want is no you to spend money on Ultimate Team. Yeah, holy shit. Uh, so I, I did actually finish Madden, but I did it mostly for the achievements. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, so um, I've only really been playing two games recently after Madden. Uh, Baldur's Gate 2, which is not my highlight. Uh, old 90s Dungeons and Dragons game that is can be... 10 hours if you want it to be, or 400 hours. It's it's insane how much so extra what is. what game is this, Chris? It's called Baldur's Gate 2. It's a Dungeons and Dragons game from the 90s. So it's like point and click huh. with your characters and everything. A lot of fun, but I mean, I'm playing it now for the first time, like 25 years later. So it's maybe even, yeah, 25 years later. So it's, it's rough. Um, but my highlight is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I know I've talked about this before, I assume but that means you finish of, it then. As of this afternoon, uh, on my lunch break of all times, I got my fourth PS5 Platinum trophy, and it was Valhalla. Uh, 117 hours, which now makes it bigger than Odyssey <clears throat> to me because I was able to get all the achievements and beat all the DLC in 128. So I know I'm less than that, but... I don't think in 11 hours I could play through the season's pass worth of content that they're going to have for Valhalla. So I thought this game was supposed to be smaller and they fucking lied because it's 117 hours of me doing all this shit. Um, but yeah, I finished it. I went through the entire story. Um, I got all the the trophies. How many that means hours I, in total did you put into it? Sorry. I said 117. Oh, okay, okay. So a lot. Um, but yeah, like... It's I, I, every like the map, obviously, in order to get every trophy, I have to clear the entire map. So every single side quest, every single collectible, every, 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 everything. It's nice that when you're on the map and you look at a region, it actually shows you all the money side quests and artifacts that are there. So you can actually like, which is basically plan. their code for it. You're not going to leave this game until you do all of this. Yeah. yeah. And so they got me actually finished it a hundred percent, hundred percent got the platinum trophy this afternoon, fourth, fourth platinum. And this is my most impressive platinum because, uh, Spider-Man miles Morales took 18 hours to get platinum. Bug snacks took like maybe 10. And then what was the last one I had? Oh, Astro. Uh, so yeah, yeah Astro, all games that are under like basically 15 yeah, Astro, hours. Astro I think took much. five hours to platinum. Like it was fun, amazing. I'd do it again, but this was 117 hours to platinum. So it's definitely the the one I committed to. So you most. know what you need to do now? Now you need to play the Trails of Cold Steel series and platinum all of them. Oh God, that sounds like <laughs> impossible. I, I would check. Two like, years later. <laughs> so I have a review for you guys. <laughs> I checked PlayStation's website. It's like percentage of people who have the platinum. Zero. It's actually just zero. <laughs> so the game itself. Gameplay, it's, I mean, if you've played Origins or Odyssey, pretty much the exact same when it comes to the gameplay. Uh, I guess it had been a bit since I played the last ones, or maybe they tweaked something and I don't know what it is, but it felt a little different at the very beginning. It did take me a little bit to get used to by the end of it it was just like like i wasn't even thinking my hands were just like doing the attacking and doing everything without me having to think um and i'm and it, i mean it's the same buttons and everything as odyssey and everything so i imagine that if there was a change it was so minor and that's why i couldn't tell what it was 
Um, fantastic game when it comes to the gameplay and the fighting, the controls. It still suffers from the Assassin's Creed curse where it's like there's a ladder here and a wall. You go to the ladder. It thinks you want to jump up on the wall and be stealthy. You could yep. try and come back to the ladder. You end up jumping on top of an enemy that you were trying to avoid in the first place. And it's just like none of this is what I wanted to happen. But the developers put the fucking ladder and the wall and everything so close. And it's the same button to fucking do all oh, of them. No, fuck. Chris, this is what you asked for. Uh, I mean, it's been that since Assassin's Creed 1. And I guess I just thought maybe they'd improve it a little bit or figure something out. They didn't. So whatever. Fuck it. I'm so used to it that I, it's like complaining about milk tasting um, like milk. It, it tastes this, like milk. What's this same. game? Uh, as I watch it, is it melee base or is there a lot of yes. mythological weaponry in it as well? There, so I got one mythological weapon. I don't know if it's a spoiler. If you guys want me to tell you, Actually, nah, sorry, I got don't, two. don't I'm, bother. Too. I'm I'm good, but oh, if I'm, I'm gonna I'm okay, gonna play the game fine. at some point. So okay, no. I won't spoil it. So it has like some fun weapons and stuff like that, and they explain it. Assassin's Creed has a bit of an out. So Assassin's Creed main story is that there was a group of people before us called the Isu, and they're like the people that were on Earth first. They had technology and everything back like like a million years ago. I think it's more like 60,000 or something, but whatever. Um, and they created humans uh, in order to be their workers. It's uh, uh, slaves, pr pretty much. Um, and this is explained not in this game. This is like Assassin's Creed 2 basically started talking about this shit. Uh, so that's the like today kind of version of the story. Um and they have an out because these Isu, these these people from before, they have you like in Odyssey, they had it where some of the Greek gods that we've heard about and know about, they were just the Isu. And it just happened that that was their name. And maybe they never died and they are still alive or they went traveling around or or passed on their DNA into a human because they know the Isu were going to die. So they're like, I'll put my DNA in a human being and then they'll start showing up like they always have an out. So in this game, when there is some mythological stuff, they do their darndest to try and always explain it using like Assassin's Creed lore. Basically. You really said darndest? <laughs> yes, I did on purpose. <laughs> Fuck. There we go. I just quickly swore, just so you know that I'm not just. Uh, Thank you, Geralt of Rivia. <laughs> yeah. mm. Fuck. Um, so yeah, so the the weaponry and everything, a lot of fun. The armor, a lot of fun, like pretty basic. If you so, played Odyssey, they haven't really changed it. They just made it Viking based instead of Greek gladiator okay, kind of uh, based. Overall -based, quality right? wise, um, between Odyssey and this, which one do you think was a better game in general? So it's really hard to answer that because of this one thing. This felt like an Assassin's Creed game, much like Origins did. Odyssey did not feel like an Assassin's Creed game to me through the entire time. It felt like an amazing game, but I felt Odyssey should have just been like called Greek Odyssey or something and just been something else. Like, don't try and stuff it into the Assassin's Creed lore or whatever, because it's it like story wise, it didn't make sense. Assassin's Creed. Um, so this game, if you were to say, like, which one do you prefer in the Assassin's Creed series? This one for sure. Which one do I like overall? I would probably say Odyssey, only because the atmosphere of Odyssey is so bright and colorful and, like, it's such a cool time in history. Yeah, it's not Where nearly this, as gritty. Yeah, this is gritty. Very gritty. Like, you start in Norway, so it's just, here's some fucking snow. Then you go to England, it's like, hey everyone's fighting over england because the romans are now dead here and now everyone else is like cool land with fish let's take it so i mean it's still nice there are very like pretty moments and stuff like a field of lavender and stuff you'll find but not like odyssey like odyssey had just these crazy set pieces being in uh greece in like 500 bc like it's just it's 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 impossible i don't think they'll be ever able to find another setting like Odyssey ever again in Assassin's Creed history. Like they'll have really cool hmm. settings, but they'll never be as vibrant as and stuff as Odyssey was. So it'll be probably impossible to actually compare it. Oh, Unless they it's... just, they go full on like crazy and just be like, okay, we've done all the stuff we can in the past. So let's go to the future. 
So yeah, is it I mean, yeah, like they could do that. Far Cry Three Blood Dragon levels. So is it like um, you would say that Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the Super Mario Three of Assassin's Creed? What? Um, I'm, I'm, what? <laughs> I don't know because if I call when that. you look at Super Mar- but within the Mario series, Super Mario 3 is really stands out as the GOAT of the Super Mario games. That's such a I'm weird wondering. thing to say when there's yeah, so man. many amazing Mario games, though. Yeah, that's the thing, because like if you were to ask me what the best Mario game is, I would probably say for especially 2D 2D wise, Super Mario World. That's the thing. If the you if you game. ask like what's the best Mario game, you have to te- you have to layer it out in tiers because it's like, okay, well, mm-hmm. if it's if we're talking these games, it's this one. If we're talking this. Okay, uh, we did that. We did that one segment where we ha- where we rate all the Mario games and Mario Three. No, I know, but again, like you're like compa- saying Mario Three is the best of all Mario games. Like, there's so many games that are legitimately right below it that there's no there's no gap. So it's not really saying much. Okay, yeah. um, it's just it's just a, it's just a, it's also a weird comparison given that Assassin's Creed and Super Mario have really no relation. So you're basically just saying like you would rate this at this point. Yeah, and again, like it's I so almost don't to... even. Sorry, it's, yeah, sorry it's it's just so hard to like really That's differentiate fine. between. Uh, them. All I'm saying is I'm I'm trying to just think of uh, somewhat of an analogy for it. Why you don't need to though? We're on a, we're on a gaming show where everybody plays games. I think we know, right? I don't think there's a need to compare that. And it's 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 so it's again it's like so like um. It's going to be different from person to person anyway. So you, you might say, well, it's like the Super Mario three of Mario games, and then people be like, fuck, I don't even think Super Mario three is that good. I'm sure there's some people. And definitely. they're on crack. <laughs> no, they're legitimate, just like everybody else. No, they're on crack. Um, yeah, like this game, I, I, if you're a hundred percenter, it is big. And there was times when I felt not burnout, but I was pretty close to it. Where it's like, like one of the fucking collectibles are these tattoos because you can get these pieces of paper that gives you a new tattoo, which you can then go to the tattoo guy. And he actually gives your your character a ta- that tattoo, and it's on your head, it's on your face, it's on your arm, it's on your chest, like really cool uh, tattoo sets. But to get the new ones, oh my god, it's on the screen right now! I can't believe this is happening. Um, the one on the screen, you have to chase the tattoo piece of paper, and it runs away from you, and that's annoying as fuck. These were the worst side quests I did in the entire game. That every time I got to one, I was like, I'm doing it for the trophy, but I fucking hate doing this, and it only takes like two minutes. But it's just once you get there and you don't, if you don't keep up with the tattoo and it gets away from you, you have to go all the way back to the starting position and do it again. And you may have run like a hundred meters to get it. And it's not the like chasing it that's hard. It's if you miss it, having to run back and start the process. Yeah, if you, if you basically fuck up one jump, that's it. Yeah, and it and it's Assassin's Creed. You're going to go to want to do one jump and it's going to instead think you want to assassinate some random person and totally fuck up everything that's happening. So, like, there are some collectibles that are annoying uh, like that. But if you're, especially if you're just somebody who wants to do, like, the fun side stuff that you enjoy, because a lot of the side stuff is really great, and just do the main story stuff, you can finish this in, like, 50, 60 hours, and you will probably love it. All of the main missions, everything I loved, all of that kind of stuff, I found the ending had really weird pacing. And I'm not going to say anything spoiler-wise. It was just, like... It went from one mission and you felt a certain way and then you go to another mission and all of a sudden it just feels like the tone is completely done or changed and the like game's over. Like I felt the pacing at the end, either they rushed it or they just like, I don't know, forgot a mission in the middle or something like that. Did It felt kind of disconnected, but leading right up to that, I was so like enthralled by the story. I was like, I need to know what happens next. And it has the same thing which i know adam you played odyssey where you go and you hunt down the cultists um this but now here you're hunting down the order of the ancients it's it's so much fun to just like get a clue and it gives you another clue you get another clue you put them together you figure out who the order agent of the i was gonna say is is it actually interesting this time because the end of the cult was not very fun the the uh, the actual tier of that from valhalla or is that from different cults from odyssey yeah, okay. the cults from Odyssey. And that's one reason I thought Odyssey didn't need to be an Assassin's Creed game. The people you're hunting weren't even They weren't even the Templars. Templars. Yeah. This one is the Templars. Yeah, you're actually. Well no, but I mean is like is like and... is like the big reveal and who's like at the center of it actually like an interesting one, or is it more just like, yes. oh, it's that person? Because it because yes, in Odyssey, when they reveal who the leader of the cultists are, you're like, 
really that's who like i don't even care about that person why do what yeah this one is interesting this one okay. i found interesting especially how it goes so they at least improved yeah, that. there's so many yeah but i mean besides two of the people under the main person so this like main person five people below them and then like a shit ton of people the main person interesting two of the five next interesting and then only one in the fucking everybody else there's so like there's obviously a lot of filler because they couldn't yeah it's mostly like, probably like randomized guys right yeah 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 they're, they're, it's not like they couldn't do 40 people like npcs worth of story that would be like, amazing oh, though if like literally every character them? every npc you knew in the game were all actually templars the entire time that would be actually really cool that would be i mean that would take a lot of work and make the game another 100 hours but i think that's pretty cool um but yeah like i i love the game it felt like an assassin's creed game it felt like a viking game they they mixed it together really well much like how like uh black flag felt like a pirate game but also felt like assassin's creed like they they did a pretty good job mixing it i would say it's a lot like like that where where it was a blend of two genres and two stories thrown together i uh the character of i avor I played a bit as a girl, played a bit as the guy. I have to admit, the guy was a lot better, whoever was playing him, the actor. But I read later that apparently it's a guy from the show, either Vikings or something. I think it's Vikings. So it's like, okay, well, that makes sense. The guy's already a fucking Viking, so they just got him as a voice to be a Viking. Makes sense. I don't know who the girl was, but she didn't have that same, I don't know, the pizzazz, you know, like... This character is like, yes, I want to I want to be this person and fight for them. Like Cassandra in Odyssey did that. No question. Way more fucking interesting than Alexios. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. This one, it was kind of reversed. Um, and you yeah. can't win them all. Yeah. But yeah, the main Assassin's Creed lore story and everything. Very cool. If you haven't played Assassin's Creed, you'll probably not know what's going on in the main timeline story and everything, obviously, but you probably won't care because you can do the whole Viking shit instead. And then to end it off, what would you give uh, it for a rating? Uh, honestly, when it comes to as a game itself, I would give it an eight. It's not perfect. Again, there are certain things in there where it's like, there's a lot of filler. Some of the side quests are just clearly filler. Uh, ending was a little jarring with its, its pacing um i'd give it an eight maybe maybe an eight and a half actually now that i think of it uh that's as a game as a whole as an assassin's creed game though it's definitely closer to a nine um because it felt like it, it was a, a very solid assassin's creed game again where it actually brought back assassinations and and the actual like assassins and the templars and and stuff like that so pretty cool stuff there very cool so then uh it has basically been a mostly newsless week so I've kind of just chosen like two things that we could probably like dive pretty deep into. One of them is technically a new story, I guess, if you really think about it, but it realistically is not that important in, in the end of it. So to start it off, we got at least a, a bit of an idea of like who's going to be E3 this year. Like very yep. vaguely anyway. So we know that it's going to be Nintendo, Xbox, Capcom, Konami, Ubisoft, Take-Two, Warner Brothers, and I believe it's Coke Media or Koch Media. I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> but we have a um we have a pretty decent setup but like people missing would be sony ea activision blizzard Se Act well who cares about activision blizzard they can go fuck themselves right now i actually i actually put ea above activision right now which tells you how much i don't like activision right now well they can't activision can't join e3 because even though it's them broadcasting as a single player experience they weren't connected to the servers so yeah that is true uh <laughs> Uh, Sega is not going to be there, Bandai Namco, and Square Enix. So there's a decent chunk of, of mainstays not set up for this thing. So it really just begs the question again, do we, did we need an E3 this year? And I think it's it's a mixed bag of yes and no, because yes, because it means at least like a chunk of people will be there in one set of days, and then you're good. But unless E3 is going to do some crazy new stuff this year... It's just conferences, which you could easily do a Twitch stream of and not have to set up a date yeah. for it. Yeah, that's 100% my opinion. Like, E3 at this point isn't necessary. All these people could come together, square like all the developers, all the, you know, the Xboxes, the Playstations, the Nintendo, and just be like, hey, listen, this month or this week, why don't we all come together and make that our reveal week? And we do our big reveals then. That way we're all 
kind of in the same boat here. And then they don't have to do E3. They do it from their own fucking, I don't know, wherever the fuck they'd stream it. Like there, on there's, Twitch. there's some ideas that I've had. Like, it would be really interesting if they treat, you know, like when we go to um, conventions and stuff and it's not just the big gets. It's not like. I, I honestly cannot wait till we can go to EGLX again, man. Okay. I, I uh, like, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say sometimes I look at, I, I look at Facebook memories daily Sometimes they're fucking embarrassing, but sometimes they make me sad because it's like, can't wait for this to go on. Can't wait to go here or, oh, it's going to be an awesome night. But now it's like, none of that's happening. So it's like, when I think it was like last, last, last year, like when, um, uh, during St. Patrick's Day, it was Comic-Con and then Chris, Adam Trump, Alex and I went to went out for St. Patrick's Day after Comic Con, and it's like, oh man, I we can't do that this year. Like it's just it's just it, it's kind of fucking heartbreaking. But I'm sorry, go ahead. So back to what I was gonna say. <laughs> so you know, at conventions where it's not just the big ads, it's not like it's when we go to EGLX. There's the big gaming tournaments. It's not like when you go to like a fan expo and there's the big gets that like your Nathan Fillions of the world and stuff like that. There are also in other parts of the venue, there's like smaller rooms where there's either a fan run or like these just really small like panels or tech demos or like little like like you have like artists that will come in and just like talk about like, you know, what what it's like to be an artist, you know, on that E3 could do something like that, and I think that would probably be their best option. Instead of just running like, okay, guys, we're here from 5 until 11, here's the conferences. Literally do what, like, Games Done Quick does and run 24 hours, because it's not like any of this stuff has to be done live. You can pre-record all this shit, and you can say, like, hey, we're here. So starting from, like, 10 at, like, you could say, like, oh, here's a bunch of tech demos and, like, the off hours, like your midnights to, like, 8 in the morning kind of stuff. You can just have, here's, like, or just recaps or just stri- anything like replays, stuff like that. But you could say, all right, eight o'clock, we got uh, the, like, we could say, okay, WB's in here. They're going to show us like a 30 minute tech demo of Gotham Knights. Or, you know, you go to like, okay, two o'clock, we're going to have a one hour panel. Uh, Hideo Kojima is going to be here and he's just going to be giving, doing like a live AMA. Like you could be doing stuff like that. I hope that E3 is going to take that sort of approach because if it's yeah. just conferences, again, the question would be asked again, what the fuck is the point of what we're doing then? Yeah, why do we need the E3? Why don't, like, Nintendo Direct and Sony, um, what does Sony call theirs? Uh, state of Play. Oh, yeah, State of Play, yeah. Yeah, like, why not just have those then? Why would we need an E3 to do that when they can just do their own, like well, they're already doing? I know why some people do want that is because well, we obviously know how Summer Game Fest went, and it was a colossally long wait for a lot of things and everything was spread out way too much oh spread out yeah so but here's here is my argument that i've made a couple of times already if we already know that because because we also didn't have a proper e3 last year because the pandemic literally was in its infancy then like this is only like three months in we're now a full year removed I think most industry people know that june is when you want to tell everybody when your stuff's coming because you want that six months of hype that you can start. So I think most people would probably agree now with enough time to set up that if you just let them go, most of most people would do their stuff in June and July. I don't think oh, like yeah. I don't think Sony is gonna go all the way to November to say like what games are coming out next month. They they want you to know when Horizon 2 is coming out, you know? Yeah. So I don't know, like I'm sure that when we get more details on what E3 is going to be like, well, there will probably be a couple of things that we'll be like, hey, that's actually not a bad idea. Or, well, at least we're getting some conferences, but I'm still going to be like, man, like you've got Sony, uh, Square Sony. Enix, EA, like a lot of companies are missing. And again, without the crowd there, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be the no, same with, like when not. you watch like when you watch sports events or like when wrestling was doing literally no fans for a good chunk of time, it's not the same. It doesn't feel the same without the crowd. So, uh, and, I, I will, and I mean like I, an actual crowd, not popped in audio. Cause we know it's fake. So We're not one, stupid. Uh, one thing when uh, Metal Gear Solid four came out uh, on the PS three and there was that whole thing that they were 
like Raiden and Snake were fighting to be who the main character was going to be in Metal Gear Solid 4. And it was a funny thing, but then when Snake turned out to be the main character in Metal Gear Solid 4, everyone erupted, roaring, cheering. That's the experience that you're going to be missing. Like, if they had another Metal Gear Solid game where a situation like that happened, What's the point of making something like that? Because the biggest problem with Metal Gear Solid 2 was like, everyone's like, when we saw all the videos, it was Snake, but the game itself was Raiden. So when Metal Gear Solid 4 came out, and they're like, oh no, it's Snake. This is Snake's game. We were all like excited. We were all like jumping for joy. But then in the end, it was like, oh, wait a second. This is, um, this is, the, now it's like, you're, you're not going to have that experience. You're not going to have that excitement anymore. I mean, you'll, at least for, it, for, for cool future. reveals, cool will still be cool reveals. But I mean, I guess it's a hit or miss because sometimes, like uh, Bethesda, uh, some of the conferences are clearly like plants and it feels very fake too. Yeah. So it kind of goes both ways. So it's hard to say what's actually going to happen, but I don't know. Like, I guess we'll know for sure when it happens in June. It's just, it, there better be something I, to kind of differentiate expecting... because if it's just press conferences, I don't care. Well, I mean, I uh, care about the press conferences. I'll, yeah, I but love, I mean, like, like it did need, we didn't need it. the E3 label to it. Yeah, we didn't need the E3 label to it. And that's exactly where my mindset is with this. So what I'm thinking thing. of this is that when uh, Mike from Nightwolf was on our show, um, he was describing E3 as it's a corporate event. We're EGLX. It's like, it's quite fair uh, parody beyond the independent and the corporate game developers where i'm gonna i'm I'm finally gonna push back on that comment let's be honest e3 is not just a corporate show anymore they opened it up to fans now it is legitimately just as much of a trade show for cup for fans as it is for corporate sponsors now because we made it that we kind of turned it into uh so adam what i'm talking about when mike was mentioning it to us was the whole situation about how it was with EGLX. They had a indie game section, which we. I, there are I, I there are actually small developers whole, at E3. It's just you don't notice them as much because all the big guys are there. I yeah. get that, but I feel like uh, as a as us, we enjoyed the independent section significantly more than we did with the corporate section. That is bullshit. The- if Ubisoft had a proper booth and Watch Dogs Legion was available on the floor that year that we went there, I would be fucking there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just, if the- generally speaking, there's not enough room in, in that venue to do that. If the lineup at the Nintendo booth wasn't fucking... That's also so true, too. If, if you didn't have to stand in line for two hours for anything. Holy shit. So the other side, too, is that it would be smart. I don't know how they would do it, whether it be through Steam or, or like, if Sony has a thing. Well, I guess Sony wouldn't because they're not at E3. But, like, if Xbox, for example, since they're there, were kind of going, hey, like, okay, here's some of our announcements. By the way, here's a couple of demos that we'll have available starting now. Yeah. So it, that could make sense. But, I mean, like, again. Yeah, that's like that E3 flair, right? Yeah. It's like, uh, it's available right now. And it's like, what? Did you actually have some guy waiting to flip a switch in the back? That's crazy. But no, it's it's going to be strange is all, is all I'm pretty much saying here. Because, I mean, we're yeah. so used to, I guess, the same format. And it could still be good. It could still be a lot of fun. There, there's obviously going to be some cool reveals regardless. Because there's definitely some stuff that we don't know that's being worked on that's been done for the last 12 months. So you never know. Not to mention we're going to get some f- hopefully final dates on games as well, which will help, including Horizon 2, which is the big one for me. But, yeah. okay, but Sony won't be at E3. But well, I we'll, bet you we'll Sony see, has a I guarantee you they'll still do one. Week. Yeah, they'll still yeah, do them within like weeks of it. They're just going to do their own thing it. and not pay E3 whatever cut they would get. They'll probably just something. be like, hey guys, ours is next Friday after E3. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, we're not at E3, but if you go to YouTube right now, look at our state of play. <laughs> they they put theirs over like, top of Microsoft just to week. be an asshole. Yeah. That would be That would be pretty crazy. But yeah, I feel like they'd still just Sony do the same. Sony would week. never do that. Well, no, Sony they actually wouldn't do never do that. 
Yeah, I think that'd be bad for business. That, that would actually be bad PR, not going to lie. Yeah. That's just PR. Like, what if half your audience is watching the Microsoft one or even one Well, that, that's, that's the reason why you separate it anyway. Yeah. yeah, you separate it so that you don't miss out on, on that potential audience. Because some people watch all of them. I watched all of them and I didn't even have every console until last year. But uh, speaking of Microsoft, it's kind of a, the best segue I can pull off here. So the other article that I saw today that made me think of like an actual question that should be answered was this Kotaku one where they were just talking about how Microsoft's supporting old games while Sony and Nintendo are leaving them behind. And I don't necessarily care about the article itself because everybody knows that like Microsoft's making an extra push towards backwards compatibility on their console right now. And that's cool and all. But this is more the important question, and I guess I'll have to re-ask it to Vishal when he gets back. Um, why is everybody so unbelievably enamored with backwards compatibility? Like, it has to be, like, the most integral part of a console right now. Because I'll be completely honest, no one uses it. We all want it, but when it actually gets implemented, almost none of us use it. How many of us actually bought PS2 on PS4 games when they came out? And if you did, did you buy them after the first week that they started doing them? Because I didn't. I bought Dark Cloud 2 the second it was there, and that's the only time I did. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because <laughs> backwards compatibility was the reason I left consoles for a while. Because PC is just like backwards compatibility isn't a thing. You have a PC and it, it's always the same console. You change the parts, right? Um, that's the reason I never had a PS4 because PS3 wasn't going to have backwards compatibility. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm done with this. Like, I just had rebought all these games digitally on PS3. I thought they'd transfer over. But the thing is, is that backwards compatibility for me, and I will admit this wholeheartedly, only matters for a set set of games like um, Final Fantasy. I want I go back and I replay the older Final Fantasies. Oh, if I could play Chrono Cross on my PS5, I would, but yes. I don't, but I can't. So... I just don't play Chrono Cross. But like, so, I don't this understand is... this this fascination that people have had with the technology because it's not like we always have had it. You didn't get to play NES games when you got a Super Nintendo. So you know what yeah. the funny thing is, is my dad and I had this conversation. So Go on. Uh, as myself, I as the old man of the group, because I'm born in January and I'm born in 1983. You're not that much older, stop. You're nine months older than me. That's and like I'm five years older than pregnancy. Adam. <laughs> but I, 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 and yet I okay, feel like I'm, I'm and yet I feel time. like I'm the most mature in the room, which is saying something. You know what, dude? You're I'm mature when dad. I have to be. But anyways, I, as the old man of the group, I got I got to mention one thing, which I I thought was funny because actually my father brought that up today. So I was talking to him. He wants to set up his the NES again. And I'm trying to set the PS Classic to mod so it can run all the retro systems. I'm not joking. My dad was so into Zelda and Mario. He actually wrote down the 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 fucking thing. The, the you know the card game where you have to match to get a power up in Mario Three. Yeah. It's going old school where you write down your codes and you he write wrote down them all down. Yeah. He has them all written down oh, in a book. It hits me right in the nostalgia. And he also, in every single Zelda level, he wrote down the level, which room has what, and how to get to each level. He wrote that shit down hand. Well, that's by what hand. you had to do back then. We didn't yeah. have no, game. We didn't have game facts. And Zelda was so the first fucking... game to have fucking saving. Yeah. <laughs> they no, didn't but... stole a battery in the cartridge. <laughs> I know. And that battery's probably dead beyond dead. Yeah. <laughs> they are dead now. And that's why you After... emulate. Exactly. And that's why you emulate. Because so your fucking save my, from 35 my dad years ago is asked gone. me to set up the Nintendo so we can play again, which I'm more than happy to. It's just I'm trying to set up the PlayStation Classic that I got. To because Adam had found a way to make it um valuable, uh, sorry, um, emulate all the classic systems. You're right, but make it valuable at all. You were right, yeah, that. yeah, that's why that's why when it was $30, I'm like, well, that's a deal because now I can turn it into a retron, See, basically. Now that is a, that is exactly, very good, yeah, but it's just I just thought it, it was hilarious the fact that like my dad what actually wrote down and i i want to fucking share that shit with you guys because 
it was I used to use those notes that he made to actually use that card game in Mario 3 so I could get all the power-ups anytime I wanted to. So it's just it, like this is a whole thing. It's like these old classic sh- shit is just so fucking legendary. Well, it's still. great. But again, the question still remains. Like, let's use the PS5 as the example. Does the PS5 have to be able to play all, all the games in their library in history? Do they have to, or would it be nice? That's the question that really is important. It would important. definitely be nice. It would be it nice. Would, but there are a lot of people to. out there that think it has to, because that's what it's supposed to have. And I'm like, guys, you don't... I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put out a real blame, brain blast for people here. If you have backwards compatibility on your PlayStation 5 tomorrow... You might play, go back and play a PlayStation game or a PlayStation 2 game when that happens. But a month from now, you'll be right back into playing whatever's new. Because there is so much out there, it is impossible to find time to go back and play all these old games while still keeping up with everything that's on. Especially with the freebies that you get every month. Especially with all the sales. Not to mention, if you have other consoles, especially if you have a PC, good lord, the library that you can have to choose from there... I just, I see people all the time being like, why can't this console have it? I'm like, you won't use it when you have it that much. Like, it's a nice that, thing to have, but is, you got you got to understand that, I like, will. you're asking for something you're not going to go out of your way to play every day. I will definitely agree with you on that part. Um, I not will, to mention, I most of us can, st- like, most of us probably kept our old consoles. Mm-hmm. I almost want to say, I feel like a lot of people just don't want to have to go through the trouble of reconnecting everything again. The problem is, Adam, I will tell you, is that while LEDs and LCD avoid uh, screen burn in, it's still subject to it. So I will say that sure. with an LCD TV, especially. That if you run a, uh, let's just say you run Super Mario 3, that bottom HUD stays there the entire game. And I'll, and... and I'll still say that's not a good enough reason to be like, Sony, you need to completely rehash everything in your system so that I can play this one thing. No, no, I'm, I, Adam, I'm not saying no, that. No, no, I'm I'm no, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you on this. I'm just saying like even that point makes me go still like that's, that's not enough. To to convince any to convince me yeah. of anything that like that's gonna suddenly force Sony's hand or Nintendo's a, hand. A lot of a lot of games right now, the HUD doesn't really stay on for that long unless you want it to stay on. So the burn in still occurs, and so, I've seen it happen on an old school TV that I have that I'm still using after 2006. It it also still just comes down to like guys, it's 2021. If you are over the age of eight and you don't know about emulators on PC, what the fuck are you... Not to mention phones. Most phones can handle that shit too. So like, you don't need... And and I'm even talking like... I guess I'm talking even older ones. I think this more applies to Nintendo than it does to Sony because PlayStation's a little bit different in in that aspect. But like, I know people that are like, man... So stupid that Switch, I can't play Super Mario like this game on 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 Switch because it's not available because of the Super Nintendo library is not that big. I'm like, okay. So if if you're that, I'm also gonna ask this question too. If you're so desperate for backwards compatibility, is that not a condemnment of your own console's library? Yeah. Hmm. All, Especially Switch. Yeah, I don't know nearly as many people that complain about backwards compatibility on PlayStation right now. I think it's a lot of it's Switch because Nintendo, quite honestly, is. For charging you a monthly subscription for retro, they certainly haven't made that library big enough to justify it. Well, I mean, the subscription for Nintendo Online is like twenty five dollars a year. Like it's even super then, cheap. though, still like if you, if the library that you have to choose from isn't all that big in comparison to what it should be. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's more, um, yeah. So for that one, it's kind of like it's it's the PS Plus idea where it's like. Even if you don't want the free games, if you want to play online, you need it. So if you play Mario Kart or Smash Brothers online, you have to put, drop yeah. that twenty five dollars. But I mean, and if, you're, if you're getting it just because you want some retro access, you're not even getting a great oh, yeah, deal out of that just either. Just getting it for that, no. Because and don't get me wrong, there's great games on there if you like the first party games. But you if, if play, you're looking for like like lesser known stuff, you're not going to find it. Even if you're looking for something like Chrono Trigger, you're not going to find it. Like yeah. you're not going to. 
It's not going to be there because if they've re-released Chrono Trigger, they're just going to take the version that's on Steam and put it in the eShop to buy it again. Yeah, and I mean, not to mention that- too, like to even to even go off of that point, most backwards compatibility stuff is going to be usually first party only because why would why would Sony, Nintendo, or I guess even well, I guess Microsoft's trying to do it, but like why would you go out of your way to put a bunch of games that you don't even own the rights to put it on there just so that people can like it doesn't seem like it's that worth their time. Yeah. The way I see it is this. There is one thing with backwards compatibility I'll throw out there, and that's the last console generation. I feel like that one should be. That's the argument that you can make. Yeah. You have to be able to yes. do that so the transition is good. Yes. So like, and then like I would never expect to play PS3 on my PS5 right now. That just seems asinine yes, exactly. to, so, to demand that. That's uh two that's the one thing that um I think it actually needs to be because what when needs I to be perked the the previous generation oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah the one yeah the current because i will say one thing when i bought my ps4 until mortal kombat 10 came out nothing was exclusive to my ps4 like i i there were still regretted games. it there were yeah. still games and they ran better on the ps4 than did on the ps3 but it was not necessary to purchase the PS3 or upgrade to the PS3. I don't know if that's a backwards compatibility thing so much as that's yeah. more like a, you probably just, there wasn't like live, like unless you're going to constantly play like new games and you have the money to, getting a console at launch is usually not a great idea. No, uh, uh, not anymore because for example- Oh, and even like just in general, I, even just in general, like I most, most, the, most first years uh, of a console aren't that strong. Adam, I would say um, the PS3 generation was the last generation where the upgrade was required. Because, for example, I would say Metal Gear Solid 4 was not available on on PS2. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not and, talking about like just Gears games needing to be there. I'm just talking like the on... overall library after a year isn't that strong to justify it unless you're a hardcore player. No, no. But uh, that was the the generation where the next generation was not going to be available on the previous generation. That, again, that's still not so, what I'm talking about. I'm just talking the quantity. Like, unless you have the money to support buying a lot of games, transitioning to a new console is usually meaningless in the first year because there's not going to be enough to justify the purchase. If you're getting a new console, like I got the PS5 because, I mean, it was backwards compatible, but even if it wasn't, I would have had to commit to playing games. So if there was no backwards compatibility, I would never buy a PS5 first year because there's no purpose to it. Like, the reason that a PS4 didn't matter to me is because I moved from 360, so I already knew going in that I was not going to have a library to go back on. Okay, I I get that. But, uh, for example, the um, when we're going from, let's just say, Xbox to Xbox 360, uh, the games that were on the Xbox 360 were not compatible with the xbox why would they be they're new games that's that's no, not but, the same thing but then the next generation that's forward compatibility when it goes from p when it goes from xbox 360 to xbox one games were still being developed for both consoles that's again that's not the same thing we're talking about with backwards compatibility that's just up to the developers no <sighs> Okay, I get that. But what I, I'm I don't. Is, I don't know what point you're trying to make here because it's not. It doesn't really it, come it, hand in hand. Then, upgrading in the first year of a console's release is not necessary anymore. I again, I'm I'm only going to push back by saying if you can afford to spend the money on newer games right at launch, then yes, it's it's still worth it to you. But I mean, now that we knew that PS4 to PS5 was going to be possible, then. You're just basically buying a buying a hardware upgrade to run things faster, which can still work because you're still going to play PS4 games. But like again, in the case of PS3 to PS4, where you knew there was no backwards compatibility, there is no reason to go from PS3 to PS4 unless you have the money to keep up with the library. If you don't, yeah. there is no purpose. You might as well wait two years when the library is at least sufficient enough. But yeah. if you're going from an if you've never bought a console before, then I guess it doesn't matter to you. It's situational. But like to go all the way back to backwards compatibility again, I think every console from here on out should at least be able to play the previous generation because yes. if you're going to buy a new console, it's easier to transition to it because your library stays with you. Yes. But if you then like, buy a PS6 yeah. and think you're going to play your PS4 games again, I think you're asking for a little much. It might still end up being possible, 
but you shouldn't be outright demanding it. That's the point. Like, there were a lot of people when PS5 was announced demanding that it play all PlayStation games. Where I went, if they could do that, that's amazing. But it's not a requirement. Just make it so that if I buy the console day one, I can still play the games that I haven't finished on my cur- on my old console. Yeah. yeah. That's all I'm asking like, for. Yeah. Like, if we bought um, something, especially something simple like... Um the new Scott Pilgrim game or the re-release of the Scott Pilgrim game and you buy it on PS4 and you buy a PS5, you'd think that something that's still that new would work on the new system. And that's that transition for me. Or in the other case, if you're like me, I didn't have a PS4. I got a PS5. I've only played two games on my PS... Oh, no, no, sorry, Bug Snacks and Astro, I guess, or PS5. And granted, you also have the PS Plus collection, so you also have a bunch of games even from yeah. the get-go that you can work I've with, too. I've played a bunch of PS4 games, and if that like one generation backwards compatibility wasn't there, I mean, I would have played like maybe four or five games in total. Like, Yeah, I you straight, have you straight would have had no purpose to buy the PS5, and you probably wouldn't have because yeah. you wouldn't have had a library. Actually, you could have exactly. console share with me, and you could have had a library, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, if but it I wasn't... Mean... Actually, that's not true. If it wasn't backwards compatible, I wouldn't have had the console either. Yeah, and and even if we both did, it's like, oh, I'm going to play some Trails of Cold Steel. Oh, sorry, that one's a PS4 version. I can't play yeah. that. I can only play. It would the basically one... be okay. You uh, buy Miles Morales. I'll buy Demon Souls. <laughs> that would basically be what we'd yeah. have to do. Yeah. So it it would like for that. That's how I see it. Going back two generations, I don't think anybody does. And if it's two generations at that point, personally, I would rather have a re-release of that game where they've cleaned it up a bit to go with modern technology. Yeah. Like, I don't want a PS3 game to be just a PS3 game anymore. I like the way it is, but make it run with a higher resolution, like, so it doesn't look all fucked up. Or at the very least, if it runs smoother, like how a lot of PS4 games are running at a much smoother 30 frames per second, because now they can handle the extra amount of stuff going on on the screen. Yeah, 100%. Like, nobody's going to want to play the original Uncharted as it was, over Uncharted in the Nathan Drake collection or whatever it was called on PS4, where they it doesn't even have to be like it. a visual upgrade. Even if it just you can guarantee it runs smoother, and maybe it's just uh, it's yeah. just like that's all it is. And the For same thing too, like honest, a lot of people are going to ask, like, can you imagine playing a PS2 game? Okay, sorry, I like Vishko, and then I'll I'll go with my point. Yeah. It's the loading that really gets me because when I was playing, yeah, that's a big part too. too. Perfect example. The loading was really fucking irritating to deal with. And like, if you have an Xbox game, Xbox was 480p. So was PS2, I think. Like, and it's, it's, I don't and it's not going to upgrade game all those like, games to 1080p. It's just going to probably still run at 480. As they are. Yeah. Re-release it, make it like under 20 bucks, and make it like, okay, so it's the same game, but it loads faster, guaranteed stable, and now it'll work on 4K TVs and it'll look nice. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't want, like, as much as I, again, like, I would love to play Chrono Cross again without having to, like, break out another console to do it. But I am also know I'm going to play Chrono Cross and it's going to look like garbage because it's a PlayStation original game. Yeah. I still love the game, but let's be honest, most games from that era look like ass now. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, They're not Super Nintendo games Nintendo. where they kind of look like indie games yeah. most more often than not, unless it's Star Fox and that's a different fucking conversation. But PlayStation didn't. It, uh, PlayStation and um, yeah, PlayStation. There are always exceptions and to the rule. Like you could play Breath of Fire. Well. You could play Breath of Fire three and it'll look fine because it's more cell shaded. So it's there are some cases no, where it works. Um, Ocarina of Time. It didn't age well. Like visually, it doesn't look great, and neither does. Um, Perfect Dark, neither does no. Conquer that Fur Day. They, they didn't age well. And I mean, that's the thing too, is a lot of people think that it's going to be like the same experience. It's like, guys, you're going to play it on a much bigger TV than you ever played before, and it's going to look like ass because it's now like 480p blown up. Or even in some cases, it might be 240. Like, it's going to look horrible. So, like, sure, I get the nostalgia value with backwards compatibility, but at the end of the day, it really just is a matter of like, if it's offered... I guess it's fine. Like I'm not, I'm never going to say no to more options, but when we get to the point where it's like people sitting there being like, if they don't put this on the console, this console has no value. It's like, guys, it's like Jim Ryan from Sony even straight up said, yeah, we have really no interest in looking too deep into this because we've done, we've looked into things like when they did the PS2 and PS4 thing and almost nobody participated. They didn't have raw data, but I can believe them because I know because I never played PS2 on PS4 games. I played Dark Cloud 2, like I said, 
once for about 15 minutes went, oh yeah, this game runs like dog shit and it's like 10 to 15 years old. I'm going to go play an actual game from today that runs a lot better. And then I stopped. My only thing is, is I understand what you're saying, but I feel like any game that has been purchased through their virtual store, like uh, I'll, I'll use, for example, NBA Jam. And like, are you talking on PS3, for example? If we're talking PS5, are you yes. talking PS3? Then no, I'm PS3. sorry, but you have to play it on PS3 at this point because because the backwards compatibility didn't happen with PS4. But if you buy a PS4 copy, yes, it's a transfer. But if it's a digital copy on PS3, I'm sorry, guys, but Sony has no need or no obligation to do it. There's no reason to. It's a two-generation gap now. Like, mm. there's a lot of games from, the, from PC days that just won't run. Like, there's a reason that GOG had to exist, because a lot of these games can't run on new OS. Yeah. So, like, at some point, it's the same thing with every... Eventually, your phone is not going to be able to be upgraded anymore, and you'll have to get rid of your phone. At some point, a video game console is going to be too advanced to run this really antiquated hard, hardware that it used to use. You're going to have to deal with that unless Sony straight up, or Nintendo, or Microsoft even, straight up just goes, all right, here's an emulator in the fucking console. Go have fun. Like, just par park in a hard drive and just go nuts. And they'll never do that because that's money they lose on. Yeah. That's why the PS3 was so expensive at launch, because they tried to make it backwards compatible with PS1, PS2, and PS3. And, and the Blu-ray player. And the Blu-ray Blu player. But it actually had, like, it's not like and it that's emulated the reason why Blu-ray became the, um, yeah. the dominant yeah. uh, media type. Yeah, for sure. I know but, a guy who spent $400 on a HD, uh, on a HD uh, DVD player. And I, I was like, uh, I don't envy that guy. Pardon? Yeah, it's if it's your own I don't money, envy that guy. who cares? Yeah. But yeah, like the PS3 was so expensive because they didn't just emulate it. Like they were different systems back then. So it actually had like a PS2 like chip in there and a PS1 chip. Yeah, like and people the PS3. think it's as simple as just it can play it because it's more advanced. It's not the same thing. No. Like that's why PS4 no. couldn't be backwards compatible. It was a literal different chipset in general. Like, they completely yeah. changed the model and the make and everything. Like, it was nothing close to what PS3 ran. Yeah. And I'm not talking specs. I'm talking literally every fucking possible way it was different. There's no way it would have handled it. Yeah. And I, like, the way PS5's doing it, where they're like, listen, a, a, like, pretty much most of the main stuff from PS4 is going to work, especially stuff that you've heard I of. think it's less than 15 games that won't work. Yeah. To me, that's perfect. And if going forward, like some of the digital stuff works and, and whatnot, that's perfect. That's perfect. Well, and if everything it's two going forward now high, has to, so we don't have yeah. that problem now. Yeah. But if, if PS6 is coming out and it doesn't play, you know, most of the PS4 stuff, unless yeah, if a developer I, if I can't gets play in the there, Trails of Cold Steel games on PS6, okay, I'll fucking deal with it. Yeah. But then again, yeah, I've yeah. already played through those games. I don't need to go back. And if I do... There's a reason why I usually keep my consoles now, because if I ever wanted to go back, I fucking can. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just, for the most part, like, I'm also just, like, angry at, like, a very small select few people, but it's just every time that I see some of the demands that I see from people, like, everybody being like, oh, you know, this is, like, everybody at the start of PlayStation 5 was like, this has to run every game at 60 frames at 4K or this is a wash. I'm like, guys, you make it sound like it's so easy. Yeah. And I mean, sure, yeah, so Sony could have done that, but we'd be paying $1,000 for that console. Yeah. Like, this is yeah, a console like... that we actually thought was cheaper than what we were expecting, and we were still on top of that expecting them to be able to emulate three more generations of games. <laughs> like, can we <laughs> yeah. just admit that us as gamers are might just might be a little unreasonable at times? Um, More than unreasonable. We're pretty entitled. A little bit. Cause like there's a there's a solo video I want to put out at some point, and this will be like our last like quick question. Cause I'll ask you guys anyway. I want to make like a long video where I go through a lot of reasons why this is happening. But you guys tell me, do you think that games are are worse than they've ever like than they used to be? Because a lot of people tell me that they get really bored with games now because they don't they don't think it's as good as it used to be. And I think there's a lot of reasons that actually say why that's the case, and it's really so, something we can't control. May I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, I'll let right. Vishar go first. So uh, with this uh, controversial 
take. Um, I think the situation is games are a escape is to be have just be treated as a fun time is to be a treated as an experience. However, in the current state of the world that we're living in, with the pandemic, with everything, I feel like it's a forced escape. And while normal times, we'd be looking at the games as like, hey, this is fun shit. This is, I love this. It's more of like a forced escape. It's like, hey, I don't have to think about life right now. So that is That's not my... answering the question though. Do you think it's it's worse than it's than it used to be? Do you think games are worse than they used to be? Yeah, like games in 2021 are they worse than games from like, 2001? Yeah, like for for like I, when you were I, I like think, when you were growing up, do you, honestly, do you think games are not the, what they used to be? I think it's the current situation that honestly games usually we would look at it whatever is coming out as hey, this is a good time, but right now it's more like Hey, you know what? This is an escape from reality. So that is my answer, and I yeah. I have no other one. Okay, Chris. All right. Well, I think games are still games. Of course, they're different. And I think anybody that complains that old games are better, one, it's personal preference slash nostalgia, or it's this other part, which is like take me as an example. I had a Super Nintendo growing up. But I had maybe 15 games on it because I was 13 and where am I getting money? It's a birthday. It's a Christmas gift. It's a whatever. So those 15 games were very, very special to me because it was limited. I'm now an adult and my Steam library is at 880 games. Of course, now I barely care about any of those games on a personal level because it's like, oh, yeah, I remember playing that game that one time, but then moved on immediately. Like people aren't as attached to games like they were. Not because games have gotten worse. Games are technically I would argue much you better. can't be attached to them because the time hasn't passed. Yeah. A, yeah. In, yeah. in 10 yeah, years, in 10 years, yeah. we're going to look at the original Spider-Man game and be like, man, that was fu- that was a fucking great legendary game. But we can't right now because it's yeah. too soon. So we're still busy thinking about 10, 15 years ago, right? So do you feel that the quantity outweighs the quality? I don't think there's actually a difference between the two. I think in reality, games are always getting better. The difference is, is there are a lot of reasons as we get older that keep us from thinking that way. Yeah. Chris, you finish your Cause point? Because I, I got a couple of things I can say. Are you finished your point? Sorry, I don't. I don't want to step. Yeah, over it here. was. It was just that. It's just that there's so much more games now because there's more developers. It's not like they're starting to f- push out games. There's so many in, like indie games weren't a thing. All that. So there's so many new. There's so many games. There's just more to choose from. Plus, most people now have like adult money because if you're playing it as a kid, you're an adult now. And the other thing is, um, it's it's the other part is mostly nostalgia. Like it's it's what you played before. And I personally think that I will look at back one day, Spider-Man now, like Spider-Man Miles Morales, or the, I guess it's just called Spider-Man on PS4, like I do the Spider-Man 2 game on PS2. That Same way that you nostalgia. look back at like Maximum Carnage on the Super Nintendo. like Yes, exactly. Or this horrible Sega uh, Spider-Man game on Sega Genesis that I couldn't control, but I actually loved it. And it's, uh, it's... So, well, in all honesty, Maximum Carnage itself is not a great game. Oh, like, fuck that. It's it a great game. Good. I don't care what anybody yeah, says. There's so much fun. It's pretty repetitive. That's what a beat em up is. <laughs> I know. That's what a side scrolling beat em up is. Yeah. It's all repetitiveness. That's what they always yeah. were. Yeah. But you think Tur- just, Turtles in Time is literally no different? No, yeah, but it's... I mean, you know, oh, so the, oh, I'll say one thing. Like, there was one episode, uh, sorry, one level in Maximum Carnage. Where you fought two bosses with with those hair with that weird yeah, shriek hair. and doppelganger shriek yeah. yeah, but then they turned out to be regular villains during the game later on. So it made no sense to me that why were they bosses but now they're regular villains? Because in the early yeah. part of the game you're learning, so of course they would be bosses then. Like I no, think no, no, I think no. in like most that games, like part. I think in like Streets of Rage, you would face bosses in the first few levels, and then later in the game, those bosses started becoming enemies. Like that's yeah. just a natural progression with those games. Yeah. Wow. that that part just made no sense to me. But, but anyways, sorry, Chris, go ahead. No, that was it. I just it's it's people complaining about this, or it's either because they're stuck on their nostalgia, or it's because there's a lot more choice now. Because and the more when you have more choice, you focus 
you're able to focus less on like a single few games because there's just so many. So I've got like a list of at least 20 things that when I do, when I, when I inevitably do this video that I'm going to expand upon a lot larger as well. So I'm going to give three, one from that has to do with your childhood, one that has to do with your adulthood, and then one has to do with just quite frankly, the industry. So number one, when it comes to your childhood, games were meant to be extremely difficult when you grew up. So you got to spend a lot more time with them. Yeah. You would play a really good like, point too, Contra actually. on average gets finished in an hour. But how many of you have actually finished Contra? It's too hard. I, I've only beaten Contra 3 once. It took a day. Games back then were designed to be really hard so that even though they were really short because fucking it was NES back or, or like Super Nintendo back, like you couldn't put that much on these cartridges. So you had to find a way to make it so that people were spending what used to be like $100 on mm -hmm. a one hour game. So you had to make them intentionally hard. Sometimes they were bullshit hard like Shinobi, but you know, sometimes it doesn't always go that way. But sure. we look at a lot of games that we grew up with being like amazing because we spent so much time with them. That's because the games made us spend so much time with them. And going back to your point as well, you, you didn't have a massive library either, so you had to make those games count. Mm -hmm. Second one has to do with your adulthood. You do realize that like, and I'm not talking to you guys specifically. I'm talking to like anybody in general who listens to this podcast. I'm going to take this very personally. I'm so just, if you're you older, if you are out of high school, especially if you're in college or beyond, if you're if you're in your 20s or up, especially if you're past your 30s, you've probably been playing since you were a little kid, like five, six years old, if not even earlier. You do understand that after 20 plus years of gaming, you've probably found what you like which means that you no longer explore, which means that you stick to a very small subset of games, which means that it's very hard to find new experiences because you generally don't look for them. It's very easy to say the games don't feel like they used to because nothing's new to you anymore. I'll be 60 years old at some point, God willing that, that's, that that happens. And you think that there are gonna be a lot of new experiences I have on games anymore? No, I'll have played games for 50 years. You will not be getting, you'll not, you're never going to play a game like you played Final Fantasy VII for the first time. It's never going to happen again. It's not possible. Yeah, no. There are so few experiences these days that are like that now. Every time we think, like, sure, sure, every time we think genres are done, something new happens. Like, we get Fortnites now, right? Like, that's the new thing. I don't know. But, like, sure. sooner or later, it's going to be right back to there's nothing new. It's just rehashing of rehashing of rehashing. And then somebody's going to come up with something and that'll be the big thing for the next five years. But other than that one thing, first person shooters are not reinventing the wheel anymore. JRPGs are not reinventing the wheel anymore. The only thing that is different is the quality of its story, the quality of its characters, the quality of its gameplay. That's the only thing that changes. But if we're talking a fresh new experience, Call of Duty is not going to get you that anymore. Final Fantasy won't get you that anymore. Playing Assassin's Creed won't get you that anymore. Wait, and then Call playing of a Duty brand new will not get you. That? And then playing a brand new based? game that is just another Call of Duty is not going to change anything. So if you have played games for thirty years, like most of us here at this at this podcast have, you do not find new games anymore. You find either better versions of what you've already played on par versions with what you've already played or worse versions and that's it wait that's you're telling game. me call of duty is not cut and paste i mean even then it's still good but like people are expecting that when another first person shooter comes out into the market like people think six days in fallujah are suddenly going to reinvent the wheel it's not it's going to be another first person shooter guys it's going to be like every fucking game that's existed so i don't want to hear people being like oh man it, this this genre stale no shit, it's been out for 20 plus years. It can't be any different now. You can alter the weaponry, you can alter the atmosphere, you can alter the setting, you can have a good story in it, but you're never going to reinvent first person shooters. You can't do it now. So anybody who thinks that gaming on that is is just not the same anymore, you're wrong. It's actually the same. It's and it's not as good. Well, yeah, because you're never going to find something that makes you feel the way you did the first time you engaged it. It's just like Goldeneye, but with better graphics. Well, no shit. <laughs> yeah. Every, like, it's like, you know how people like to say, oh, that, like, here's a great example. Greta Van Vliet. Everybody says they're a Zeppelin knockoff, right? Mm. Every rock band is a Zeppelin knockoff, just like every act is a Beatles knockoff, right? Everything is like that. Every game technically is a Pong ripoff, no matter how you slice it. Yeah. 
because every it's platformer the first. is a Mario ripoff. Yes. Every platformer. It, it, for sure. Yeah. But it brings every something RPG slightly different to the table. Ripoff. People just need to understand that, like, you can't ask a game to give you that fresh view like you were nine years old playing Super Mario for the first time. It just isn't possible anymore. No. And then the last thing is, quite honestly, the real reason. And I mean real as in, like, it hits you in real life. You're older. You're not a kid anymore. You have responsibilities. You have rent to pay. You maybe have kids to take, to take, take care of, excuse me. You have potentially, fi- like, family members that are you know, getting up there in age and you're having to take care of, you have a job that is probably grinding you every day. Do you know how hard that is on your psyche to make it so carefree anymore? It's impossible. It's yeah. so easy to think things Dude, are worse now like because your entire now. life is not what it used to be when a kid when you had nothing to think about except I got to go to school and then I go home and I get fed and I get to play my video games or watch cartoons. That so was your even life. right now, I will say like with my mentality that I always strive to be better i always strive to for self-improvement but even like, then you'll never get to where you were as a kid you just you no, can't you won't. when you're a kid you're not worried about that stuff you're not trying to self improve. like here's a great example metal gear solid i'm 33 you know what i don't want to happen 34 but you know what a kid at six years old wanted to be the most seven because yeah. six or seven is a long time you know how every person as they get older thinks the next year is, is coming by faster than the next? As a kid, years took forever. Oh my, because you didn't know what, like if you're seven, you only have six other years to look back on. I'm 33, I got 30, well, more like 30 years, but not 32, but 30 years that I can look back and, mem- and remember and think how long that's that's gone, but yet it feels so yesterday. Yeah. So like, there's there's so much about it that people just, they seem to just think that, oh, it must be the games. Like, no, man, there's a lot in your head that you just can't see. There's no, so much not. on the and side. Honestly, and like I said, that's three use... reasons of like 20 plus that I have. We use games, honestly, as an escape from just a, the reality that we're living, especially right now. Well, yeah, and we can still use it. But I think people are, seem to get caught in this in this weird place of them thinking like it's not the same. Like, yeah, it's not the same. You're not seven. You're not yeah. 11. You're not 11 and a half, for God's sakes. Like, every experience is going to be different from you as you get older. And it's going to be the yeah. same, too. Kids right now that think this is the greatest. There are so many kids right now, whether you're, like, really young or maybe you're a teenager and you're really in the thick of it, you're going to think this is the greatest era of gaming ever. And we're all sitting here being like, nah, it's not the same. In, in 20 years, PS8, if that's still a thing, will be around. And they'll be like, it's not the same back on PS4. It's not the same. It's yeah. literally how it is. And I, th- and I think that a At lot that of people point, take too much time I, I into feel that. Like the, I feel like it'll be just one console. I'm not uh, having honestly. that conversation. <laughs> oh, sorry. You mean, you mean in general, like, just it's, it's going to feel like a console. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, a new console's out. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah, just going to be a console. You got to think yeah. of it like how we felt about Super Mario Brothers 3 when we were kids. There's a kid right now feeling that way about Fortnite. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And they're going to get older and they're like, Fortnite was like this crazy game. And when they're telling it 30 years from now on their podcast, you know, fucking Simon shits or whatever the fuck he's going to make. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be going on about how Fortnite was the greatest game ever. Find this podcast from the same era. Who the fuck is playing Fortnite and loving that shit? And like, we're riffing on it and shit because it's not Super Mario Brothers 3. The honest reality is, is is games are always better than they've ever been, but we can't feel that way because there's too much behind us that we can't help but fall back to. The games aren't different, we're different. And in in fact, I'm probably playing better games, but because I'm comparing it to things that I carry so much more value in with nostalgia, it's impossible to rate them higher. That's why Mm -hmm. I also don't like a lot of comparables when you say like, oh, this is, you know, this is as good as this game from 15 years ago. Like, again it's you can't compare the two it's you do that in any sort of aspect when there's decades in between there's no way to compare like even games five years ago almost it's it's that point where it's like man you're gonna put so much more stock in those games than you would the one that you just finished well it's like for example like i I will say my favorite zelda game is twilight princess but if you ask anybody the goat of Zelda games is Ocarina of Time. That's that's, well, that's my and that's not even true. You'll still get people that are like, oh, the original or Link to the Past, or it, some people, some people, some people will go Link's Awakening. I feel like some people if go, you actually did some, the family 
thing, it would be Ocarina of Time. And now you're going to have people that say Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is their Ocarina of Time. There is no, there is never a reason. Like, I will never compare a Final Fantasy. Like, if, let's say 16 ends up being amazing. Let's just say hypothetically, I don't think it will because I have no trust in Square, but let's just say hypothetically that Final Fantasy 16 is a 10 out of 10 game. I may still not be able to, t- to put it better than 6 or 10, not because I don't think it is, but because my brain is going to constantly fight that. Yeah, like, no. Do you remember the way you felt when you played 10 for the first time? Do you feel that way now? No? I at there some point go. want to go it's scream 10 all over again, and I guarantee you it's going to be me mostly being like, wow, there's a lot of plot holes in this game. <laughs> <laughs> No, you do it. You're gonna I ruin your. You're gonna, you'll just you'll laugh. ruin it yourself. I know exactly what's gonna happen. I'm gonna spend most of Final Fantasy X being like, you know, they would have drowned if they played Bits Blitzball for that long, right? <laughs> yeah. I, oh my god. Re- Why would you do that to yourself? You fuck. Because it's fun. Yeah, no, it's not I fun. That That's game just four years ago. Self punishment. I, I played well, four years. Well, who am I kidding? I love to punish I myself. But I can't punish myself worse than you two guys because Chris played Madden and you played Brick Breaker, so I clearly cannot punish myself as hard. Yeah, actually, I have an announcement. Um, I was on the PlayStation app the other day and Vishal was playing Brick Breaker again. That's my announcement. Yep. I See? saw you. See? I, 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 I can't, just, you, you guys I can't just, call me up for punishing I, I, myself I really when you guys do it so much harder than I ever could. I just had a really fucking boring day, and I was like... So you, you know decided what? to play Brick while. Breaker. Sorry, sorry, it's been a while. Not not South Park, not Saints Row, not anything fun, Brick Breaker. Yes. So now we know what Vishal does when he's depressed. All right, so we found Vish's uh, stress game. All right, well... Yeah, to make myself even more fucking stress, I actually threw my fucking controller the other day. So, I so, threw so, out. I was like, Don't fuck this! Guy. So minus uh, depression and stress, any last thoughts on this topic before we uh, close the show for the night? Um, honestly, oh. I think I think it. it I'm going to look at it at two spectrums. I think the backwards compatibility needs to be more. I, I, I personally feel this is my personal opinion. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you: Do you want it, or or do you like do you need it? Because that's that's the ultimate question, right? I want. Okay. That's the difference. Is if it's a want, available. Sony has no obligation. Yes. I want the backwards compatibility to be available for all generations. And here's well, here's the here's and the hot take, guys. Also, we all Adam, actually Adam, want this it. Is, this is my like this is you said this you were asking for our final takes. My other final take is that guys, gaming as a whole is getting better because it's being taken more seriously as an art form, as a platform. Where we look like there was there, I remember back in 2007, one guy told me he's like saying there's a good story in a video game is like saying there's a good story in a porn. But the fact is, so that guy's dead. Um, at that point, he was about 350 pounds. That, and about what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> he was about five foot ten, so he could be dead. Oh my, god. oh my god, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. No, it wasn't Maso, I will tell you that. <laughs> Forget that guy being dead, I wanna kill myself. <laughs> but all I'm saying is like it, it's just the ignorance of the media format, of the art form, that why can't a video game have an engaging and thought provoking storyline? Because we've had that before for a long time. For example, any of the Metal Gear Solid games. They've had a very thought-provoking and a um, complicated storyline. And even JRPGs and even fucking like any of the Final Fantasies that were on the PlayStation. Even before that, Super Nintendo Final Fantasy is a tremendous storytelling. Exactly. Chrono Trigger. I don't understand why these dumb fucks think that video games don't have good storylines it's like okay oh, i, I gotta know. shout it. who are these people now like today who are these people uh in my opinion they're they're nothing no 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 uh, no, no no i'm not asking you for your opinion i'm asking who are these people these are people i used to work with do they play games on the regular basis i don't know this is a guy because these uh, people I, don't I, sound I, like people who play games i'm not, i i i am not joking I, I, I am saying this sincerely. He was telling me one day that on his Wii, 
He was playing. <laughs> Do I want to hear this he story? Was... I don't like where this is going. Madden. He was playing Madden on the Wii, and he lost to someone. But he's like, oh, I feel like it was a 13-year-old kid. Okay, that really didn't bring me anything. Um, if somebody, I'm, I'm going to straight up give the hot take here. If anybody says the yep. words storytelling is is not a thing in gaming, they don't play games. Yeah. Yeah. Like they literally hire writers that write stories much like you would a TV show or a movie. There's no difference. Oh, yeah. In fact, games are probably better at telling stories than any film or television show ever could. Mm-hmm. And no, to get no. the feeling across of characters, I feel way more scared playing. And I'm not even talking because of the time. I'm not even talking them. because games can be 80 hours. I'm just talking because you can literally feel like you're there because you're the one controlling it. Yeah. There's a reason why a lot of video games can't make good TV or films because they just cannot act in the same way. No, and like I said, it, it's a lot of games are like 20 hours where you try to fit that all into two hours. I still don't even think work. it's the time thing. It's not even the time thing. It's because you literally can't go from a game where you are the full control of that story and suddenly turn it into a movie where you don't have control. You're now, you're basically watching a video game happen and unfolding towards you. It's not the same when you're in the thick of a heavy battle. It's not the same thing. Until we can have like full-on VR movies, in, and I'm like talking high quality, it's just not a thing. You can't get the same level of storytelling that a video game can do because you are the one in full control. Yeah. Yeah. But that's going to do it. After uh, all the overstress and, and, you know, fuck these people talks. This has been the VCR Podcast. Episode 70 is in the books. Thank you so much for checking us out. So, if you are watching this on the Twitch stream or the VOD, obviously follow this channel for more content. We do this every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, after that, this goes up on my YouTube channel. That is CS Radical on YouTube. Those are posted usually the next day. After that, you know, obviously, uh, if you are watching the video version of this, which I hope you are, because that makes it easier. Uh, all our Twitter and Instagram tags are there. I'm actually trying to use Instagram again. God forbid. I don't know how the hell that's going to go. Up. It might it might go two weeks again before I stop, but you never know. You post know. a picture. You post a caption. You it's post hard, text. man. I don't know how to explain oh, it, but it's that. hard. I get that, dude. And Being then, uh, as someone who works in the industry, I get that. And then lastly, of course, if you're listening to this on any audio platform, if you can give us a rating, please do so. And otherwise, if you want to hear this on audio platform, maybe you want to take this on your drive to work. I don't know why you'll need us on the drive to work because there's no fucking traffic on the roads in most places. These Actually, that's not true. If you're in the States, you're pretty much back to normal at this point. So, um, But yeah, if, you, if wherever you can take us, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, Google Podcasts, and many, many, many more, you can check us out there too. So on behalf of the rest of the guys, thank you so much for checking us out this week, and we will see you on the next one. Have a good night.